Welcome to Cocktails, Tangents, and Answers. We are back for another episode. I'm Rich Mackey, one of your hosts. And I'm Caitlin Dre, one of your other hosts. But there are only two of us, so I'm just maybe the other host? Yeah, maybe. I mean, we could have a, we could have guest hosts. I feel like in the it, it, off camera, off mic, we should probably come up with like a, a title. Do we have titles? Are we just hosts and other hosts? I mean, I guess. I, <laughs> I mean, I'm the, I don't know, you're the fun one. I don't know. <laughs> Oof. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry if we blew your ears out with that one, folks. I just have an outside voice. It's a gift and a curse. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what that makes me if you're the fun one. Like, am I like the straight man, which has so much irony in so many ways? It's just, I don't think that's it on a lot of levels. I don't know. I don't know. Well, how about we talk about a cocktail? I would love that. Yeah, so the podcast is called Cocktails, Tangents, and Answers, obviously. Uh, cocktail is the first thing, so let's roll one out. Yeah. Uh, today's is one I think both of us could probably make most of in our sleep. We yeah. are doing a margarita, but not just a margarita. Just a margarita. We're doing a jalapeno margarita. Yes, we asked our guest what she would prefer. Uh, we gave her a few choices, and she said jalapeno margarita yes. without hesitation. She went for spicy. Yes, and she is. she's like, she's a little sweet, and she's a little spicy. We'll hear from Jerry a little bit later on uh, SEO, SEM, and what all of that means and how they work together. But, but for now, cocktail. Yeah. So jalapeno margarita. So I like a margarita. I'm yeah. good with it. My margarita has to just be like fresh lime juice, yes. tequila, and either a little triple sec, and then I like a little splash of Cointreau in there, a little yeah. orange. I, yes, I love a little triple sec or a little like, you see, you get, that's, I think you're the bougie one. Like if I do we're both? Gonna, yeah, I mean, just like the X, because I'm like, I don't know, triple sec, triple sec, it's triple sec, but you're like, I need Cointreau, please. Like, yeah. it's, it's just like a I little mean, extra. We Which like it. Yeah. I like the oranginess to yeah, it. Yeah, the zest. And I have been told uh, at home that any orange liqueur will do. Yeah. <laughs> I have orange. said no. I need the square bottle with the Cointreau and the fancy type across oh, the front. Yeah. Uh, like a design whore a little bit. Yeah, kind of. Like, like pleasantly. Uh, yeah, I just, I don't <laughs> like a margarita mix. I've done it. There's a couple out there that are acceptable. Mm -hmm. um, I can't remember the one we just bought. But it's a little fizzy, which is interesting. Oh, yeah. I could be into that. But, Not um, all the time, though. Oh, no, no, no. And you can really have, like, one of those. And then you just get the tummy bubbles. Yeah. The lime ones, like, I could drink all day long. There, yeah. Not a good idea, there but I could. There is really something to be said for just a well-done anything, but specifically a well-done margarita. I think because so many of our Midwestern introductions to a margarita is like green or red and it comes out of a slushy machine and like that's, mm -hmm. it just is such a disservice to uh, an, uh, an easy drinking like Plata tequila and a fresh lime yep. juice and a little bit of simple, and like simple syrup, I should say. Yeah, the blended margaritas that is it weird to say we all grew up drinking? I mean, legally, presumably. Yeah. Um, I don't even like those. No. Like, it's like, if I was going to have a slushy, this is not the flavor I would do. No. I would, I do would a, pick blue, obviously. Oh, I would do a cherry limeade from Sonic <laughs> as a slushy. That would be my thing. But um, when I was introduced to, like, margaritas on the rocks, it was when I was traveling in Mexico, yeah. and I was like, you can do this? Like, you yeah. don't have to blend the ice? Mm -hmm. And then it was, like, life-changing. And it, it doesn't, like kill all the flavor profile with all that ice like right. when it's on the rocks you actually taste what you're supposed to be tasting as opposed to red dye number 12 yeah <laughs> like, just, right yeah. did you ever um in let's just say college perhaps do a mountain dew margarita so mountain dew becomes your margarita mix and you throw some tequila in there and that's your kind of like low rent low budget margarita one of the things that you should know about me is that i was not invited to parties oh really <laughs> in high school or college uh no i i got I choose to say I got cool. I've never been cool. I am still not cool, but I got more fun as I got older. Oh, okay. I just, I, yeah. The, like, the stigma of like, you will, you will drink alcohol and you will die from my parents in high school really set in. And I didn't get over that until I was like 25. Oh, I didn't really get that from my parents. My parents don't drink, didn't drink. Um, my mom enjoys a margarita though. That is her one go-to drink <laughs> if she's going to do one. Uh, we've gotten her a little bit into wine with a trip to Italy. So yeah. she's got a few wines that she likes. 
Um, but I never really got that from them. Like there wasn't really a fear thing. It's just, it wasn't something we did in our house. Like we didn't have a bar cabinet. We didn't have a liquor cabinet. Mm -hmm. None of that kind of like, you know, teen rom-com kind of movie thing that none of that was ever mine. Like replacing the vodka with water. Nobody will notice. They'll notice like spoiler. One, they'll notice and two like gross. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so it just really wasn't a thing. And so it wasn't something I was very interested in even. Mm -hmm. So I didn't even really, I didn't actually didn't drink at all in high school. Yeah. Um, it just wasn't a thing like friends were doing it. And I was like, I didn't feel peer pressure. I was just like, I don't really feel like it. Mm -hmm. And now I like, I can still go out and not have anything or I can have, you know, six drinks. Like I can choose. Mm-hmm. It's my choice. Um, so I have a question for you. This this specific drink is the jalapeno margarita, yeah. though. So how would you inject the jalapeno flavor if you're making this from scratch? I think if I was going to do it at home, I would either like muddle some fresh jalapeno mm-hmm. or just garnish with them. But mm-hmm. I think in a garnish, you're not going to get the full like fresh jalapeno mm-hmm. bite. But like a little a little muddle, and then I would maybe I don't know. I, I see. I'd consult my my in home bartender. Right, you have also one of those. My husband. I have an in home <laughs> sommelier. Yes. You have an in home bartender. <laughs> Between the two of us, we are completely we're covered. A, we're a fully stocked bar. But um, I think the one thing that I've seen done really well to make sure you get the jalapeno flavor is you use it. Slice jalapeno and use a slice and run it around the rim of the glass. Oh, sure. Because you don't get, the seeds aren't there, obviously. Yeah. So you don't get a ton of the jalapeno, but you do get a little bit of the flavor in almost every drink. I think the other Midwestern thing that we get is that jalapenos are pickled and come from a can. Right. Like the idea of (laughs) jalapeno Uh. flavor for a lot of people in our area is like, why would I ever do that? That would be terrible. But that like crisp, Mm -hmm. fresh jalapeno flavor in with the lime, it just, it's like, it's like a, like a really delightful guacamole in a glass. Do you know what I might try when I get home? I might try actually getting a jalapeno and slicing it, taking the seeds out and putting the slices, like infusing, putting them into the tequila into, bottle. Yeah, yeah. And then see how that infusion goes. That might be a good experiment that we can report back on You know, later. one of our bartender friends does infusion. Like, that's one of his hobbies is, like, infusing things and just seeing what sticks and, like, what's good. So I, I look forward to the thrilling conclusion of that experiment. <laughs> <laughs> so there you have it, folks. Jalapeno margarita. How you get the jalapeno in there is your choice. We've given you several options. You could also Google it. Yeah. Choose none of these options. I mean, there are also jalapeno, like, infused tequilas out there already. Yeah. There's a habanero vodka that I've done, it's sort of the vodka margarita. In a Bloody Mary. It's Fantastic. So good. Yes. The easiest way to do it also is uh, Trader Joe's, if you have one of those near you, or you can probably find it at a different grocery store. In the summer, they do a jalapeno limeade, yeah. so non alcoholic, but you've kind of got it there and you just mm-hmm. bring that home, mix it with. You know, the tequila, of your, the tequila of your choice or put the habanero vodka in the jalapeno limeade. And now you got a double pep yeah. thing going on. What is is that just like a vodka lemonade? I think so. A vodka limeade. Yeah. Ooh, that could get dangerous. That's, see, that's too close to college, I think. For me. Really? See, and I never did I those <laughs> until I was I was in my 20s before I ever had a vodka lemonade. Yeah. And there's a bar near us. um here in Omaha that serves uh, flavored vodka lemonade. So you can get a raspberry vodka lemonade, a blueberry vodka lemonade, a cherry vodka lemonade. It's been destigmatized for you. It has. And they come in really cute mason jars. Like you can buy a carafe and they have a special like on Sundays or Wednesdays or I don't know. There's some day. A day that ends in Omaha. Yeah, Charred Burger Bar if anybody in the Omaha area wants to go there like for vodka lemonades. Just look up when the special is because I have no idea. (laughs) Again, Google will know. Google knows everything. <laughs> so that's our cocktail. And a couple of tangents in there. You got a little college history uh, for both of us or Some post-college. Some you maybe did or didn't need to know about me. We'll see. <laughs> I think we're pretty good. So as uh, Caitlin shared with you, our guest today is going to be uh, Jerry Bethel. She is a uh, wizard at uh, search engine marketing or PPC or Google ads. All of those mean the exact same yes. thing, SEM, um, and has been diving deeper into SEO and the relationship between those two um and just just fascinating and loves a good spicy margarita yeah she's a little spicy she's a little sweet it's gonna be great stay tuned for our interview with jerry and now enjoy this musical interlude and if you choose a dance break Welcome back, 
after your dance break slash musical interlude. I'm so glad you're still here. Uh, I am Caitlin. I'm here with Jerry Bevo, who is our, what did, tell me your job title. Let's start there. Digital specialist. Perfect. And <laughs> you are special. Let's, oh. let's make sure that that makes, makes the cut. Um, I want to start with like, tell me about how you got here at the agency first, and then maybe we'll peel, peel that apart a little bit. Yeah. Um, so I started, um, to get an interest in media and advertising when I was in college at UNL, my friends were doing the major. So I was like, Oh, I'll give it a try. So I ended up graduating with um, a bachelor's in marketing and then I joined the agency. So like a little over a year ago, it feels like almost two years. It is almost two two years years in September. Yeah. (laughs) It goes so fast. (laughs) Um, So yeah, now I work um, as a digital specialist um, supporting our clients with their SEO and their paid media. Yeah. And you're kind of our Google ads guru. Like we count on you to like really dig deep into what is working and what's not working. And if I may, you do a really great job at that. Like you break it down and also make it easy for people to understand, which is another reason that it's great (laughs) here because we're hoping we can answer some really burning questions about how pay-per-click advertising or SEM advertising, as I'm learning, Mm -hmm. uh, can indirectly boost organic SEO efforts. So tell me first the big difference between SEO and PPC or pay-per-click. Yeah, definitely the biggest difference is one you're paying for it and one you're not. So or it's in their name. <laughs> yes. Thank you for You'll never me. forget. <laughs> so yeah, organic SEO, you're really focusing your efforts on trying to appear in search result pages yeah. organically without paying for it. Yeah. And then uh and that's through things like blog posts, yes. or content yeah. on your website. It can be content on your social media, yes. like those types of things, right? Yes, okay. it's really about putting the effort into your content to where it's relevant Mm -hmm. and um, needed by the audience enough to appear in some of those top spots. Yeah. And then, um, you know, pay-per-click advertising, you're paying to appear in those spots. And that's through like keyword selection and um, like where you might appear on like a trade associated website, those types of things, right? Yeah. Yeah. Just kind of the order of those listings in Google search results when you search for it. Any type of keyword or keyword phrase. Perfect. <laughs> See, all of these things that I'm repeating are things that Jerry has taught me in the past. Right? So <laughs> this is a review session. Stick with Jerry <laughs> and she will not steer you wrong. Okay, so how does pay-per-click advertising, PPC advertising impact SEO? Talk to me about that. Yeah, so it actually does not impact it directly, but it supports it. Okay. So, both strategies have the same goal. You know, mm-hmm. we want to be in like the number one spot in yes. SERPs. Everyone does. They just get there in different ways. So together, they really support each other. And when you do a pay-per-click strategy with your SEO initiatives, mm-hmm. it's like a boost. It's like, like I always think of it as like, say you and I are working out, okay? Yes. Which, you know, I'm not, but well, maybe like- you are. <laughs> I'm not doing that. We need a different analogy. I know. This this might relate to someone out there. Maybe it will inspire us. Let's stick with it. We're working out. Okay, we're working out. You're using dumbbells. You're using bands, whatever. Yeah. And I'm using nothing. I'm just using my body weight resistance. Okay. So you're going to see results a lot faster than I am because I'm not using any equipment. You know, I just have my body weight. Okay. You have all this extra equipment. So it's this kind of the same thing. Yes. So the equipment in this sense is the dollars that I'm putting yes. towards yes. a search or a display ad. Yes. Your pay-per-click advertising is helping your organic SEO, which is, you know, getting fit. Whatever your end goal is, you know, getting to the top of SERPs, SERPs page, you know. It's, okay. It's that Just extra. For those of us at home, spell out SERPs for me once. Oh, yes. Yeah. Search engine results pages. Perfect. Thank you. <laughs> it's a mouthful. It is. And it um, 
sir, like you say syrup and I'm like maple or like, <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> maybe a little bit of a list going on in here. No way. No. It's just because I'm always thinking about food. <laughs> so I don't play okay. It. So we kind of understand the difference. We understand how they can work together. What are the benefits of running a PPC campaign alongside your organic initiatives? Yeah. So they've actually done studies on this. And, I love a study. Um, Nerd out with yes, me. Yes. <laughs> so um, they found that searchers are more likely to click on one of your organic listings if they've seen an ad for you. So like in search results, ads are at the very top. Yeah. Like that's the first thing anyone's going to see. But so say they scroll down, they don't care about the ads, but they see your ad and then they go down to the organic results and they see you again. You know, think about seeing like two different sources of information from the same company. It seems more reputable. Like, I was say, you're just, that ad is establishing you as an expert. Yeah. Like putting you top of mind. That's yes, fascinating. Yes. Yeah. It's like, uh. Thinking of it as like real estate, like you're taking up more real estate. Yeah. You know, yeah. that spot is you instead of your competitor. Mm-hmm. You know, you have two spots instead of one. That's really fascinating. I am always interested in like the psychology behind stuff. So it's like, are they our clients or potential customers seeing you like that level of expertise? Is it because they saw it first where they're like, oh, I have subconsciously like digested this. I want to, re- I'm going to find that study. I'm going to read it. <laughs> it sounds super interesting. <laughs> yeah. And in the same sense, um, Google supports this and they found that sites that have a stronger organic presence in search results have a better paid click-through rate. So people who put a lot of effort into their organic SEO get more clicks on their paid advertising. That's fascinating. So, so that, it goes both ways. Yeah. Is that like a an endorsement then for like stronger content? I mean, like, is, is, it, is it strong content that's like resulting in those... It's like ban- benchmarks. I'm trying to think of like, yeah, so you know what I mean? It's more or less just having a holistic strategy and really yeah. hitting the market in, in both instances, like yeah. using all the tools in your toolkit is yeah. really, but yeah, content is a huge part of organic SEO yeah. because you really have to earn that top spot, you know, it's that, that pain. Yeah. That makes a ton of sense. Um, are there drawbacks that we should know about to pay-per-click compared to organic? Um, yes. So for pay-per-click, obviously, it is not free. It costs mm-hmm. money. Right. Yeah, you have to have a budget. <laughs> yes, yes. But it's an investment. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> um, and it's not sustainable. So... As soon as you turn off a Google Ads campaign, a pay-per-click campaign, yeah. that traffic is gone. Like, it's it's gone. Done. Yeah. yeah. But with organic, it's a long-term incremental growth. So you're paying in a lot of time, mm-hmm. but it's sustainable for yeah. growth and more traffic and sales. It's just going to take longer to see those results. Sure. Yeah. So like one is the sprint and one is the marathon. Yep. Exactly. We're, we are getting fit. We well, are. Like, <laughs> well, well, we making a sweat just thinking oh, about oh it. <laughs> Somebody asked me the other day, they're like, oh, you look like you're going for a run. And I was like, I only run if I'm being chased. Like, <laughs> yeah, I'm not I'm interested in your, your marathon or your sprint. Yeah. So how would, like, what's a quick win? How could a business get started with pay-per-click advertising? Is there like a quick hit, easy way in? What yeah. What do you recommend? I think for, say you're a small business and you're just, you're not familiar with Google ads. You just want to test it. You haven't hired an agency. Um, I think an easy way to get started would launching a brand campaign. Okay. So you can start a Google search campaign and just bid on your brand name and variations of your brand name. And um, to take this a step further, yeah. something we actually do deploy for our own clients is bidding on competitors' brand names alongside that. So, yeah. you know, if you have a huge competitor, say like you're Caitlin's pet store. Yeah. 
and you're I'm trying to everything. You're trying. I love how this goes. <laughs> oh, thank God. There's I'm... a hypothetical. <laughs> I have hives already. This is a common theme. I get hives a lot. Um, so you're trying to compete with PetSmart. Yeah. PetSmart is huge. They Everyone and knows Mega. PetSmart. Yeah. So you would want to bid. Oh, no, I was like, it's Petco, but that's Petco. <laughs> <laughs> Same so time. I want to bid on PetSmart and yes, Petco to yes. compete with them, even yes. though they're gigantic. Exactly, exactly. And you're not only, you know, trying to take some of their traffic, but you're driving up the cost for them to bid uh, on so their the, own. The supply and demand scenario. Yes, you're okay. driving their cost up for their brand That's campaigns. Sneaky. You know, and, and we have actually seen um, conversions on competitor keywords yes for our own clients it's actually something i i always do and it's it's proven successful and it's something super easy that you can just you know throw ten dollars in and just make sure you're at least owning the search traffic for your own brand name yeah you know that's something super simple to get started Mm -hmm. wow what oh that's a huge win what did we miss? Did we forget anything? Um, I do have some more benefits. Yes, tell if they want to keep going with that, there's just so much good stuff. How yeah. can we stop? Um, so there, so we already went over. So users are more likely to click on your ads and your organic search. Yeah. Um, the more they've seen your brand. Okay. Mm-hmm. So more brand awareness, more, um, real estate. Yeah. More eyes you're getting seen. Um. So another really good thing about doing SEO and pay-per-click advertising is you get faster results for optimizing your organic keyword targeting. Okay. So say those words again <laughs> in another way. Yes. <laughs> so when you're deciding what keywords to maybe write in your title tags of your blogs yeah. or to insert in your meta descriptions, like those descriptions in the, yeah. in the search results. That stuff matters. It's hard to know which keywords are working mm-hmm. because organic SEO takes so long. Like okay. it feels like you get gray hair. It takes so long. <laughs> it's the job, the job is never <laughs> over. Um, so when you are running a pay-per-click campaign, you can test keywords and see, okay, this one's con- this keyword's converting really well in my yeah. campaign. The results are immediate. So you can make, then you can make content around that that yes. helps you rate organically yes. as well. Yes, That's exactly. So easy. easy, Yes, says. Like, yes. Well, <laughs> you can make better informed decisions yeah. this way. Um, and same thing, like if you have, if you have in your campaign, like, a high volume keyword that you know people are searching for mm-hmm. a ton that you really want to bid on, mm-hmm. but it's just not working for you. Mm-hmm. Like you're not getting there. Maybe the cost because it's too expensive. Yes, or yes. It's like too popular. Yes, okay. too competitive, too expensive. You don't want to pay for it. Mm-hmm. It's not working. You can switch that to your organic initiatives and like focus that and work on it there. Yeah. And, without paying for it. That's brilliant. Yeah. So that's pretty much all the benefits. I think we could just go on forever, but I, I feel like those are that's really the, the main ones. And you've given us some good, like, I say easy, knowing that it does take time and it mm-hmm. does take effort, but some really, like, digestible, quick wins for people that mm-hmm. maybe aren't ready for an agency, yes. but are looking for some things that they can implement on their own and like in any blog platform you have your meta description and Mm -hmm. your title tags and like those things breaking that down and making that a little bit easier for people to understand is is really helpful and what we're here for so yeah that's true and we got to drink oh my gosh we forgot something (laughs) i I have a closing statement to the points um so this is this is through a google Web page, you know, so you know this is you're not credible. Right. Um, As Google says, it has to be true. If, if it's on Google, it's right. You know, the internet is always right. <laughs> All right. So Google says, just to wrap us up in a bow here, and I'll let Caitlin finish. Um, 
using SEO and Google ads together may give you the best chance of bringing traffic to your site in the short term and enhancing your business's presence online for long-term success. Which is exactly what you've been saying this whole time. Yes, what everyone wants. Yeah. That's perfect. <laughs> I love it. Thank you so much for these easy, easy wins and for inspiring our sweet and little spicy cocktail for today. Yes, It was you. a real pleasure having you, Jerry. Thank you so much. Thank you. Here's a quick tip on search engine optimization and pay-per-click advertising. Each have their own distinct advantages and disadvantages, but using both simultaneously is more effective. By only doing one or the other, you could miss out on potential leads and traffic. That's it for another episode of Cocktails, Tangents, and Answers. We hope it was as much fun to listen to as it was to make. You can find me on Twitter or Instagram at at Rich Mackey. I try not to make it too difficult. It's just my name. And you can find our agency at antidote underscore seven one. That's A-N-T-I-D-O-T-E underscore seven one on Twitter and Instagram as well. And you can find me at home sipping a craft cocktail prepared by my in-home bartender. It's my husband. We'll be back with another episode every other week and a whole new cocktail recipe, plenty more tangents, and of course, answers to those pressing marketing questions. And if you'd like to send us a question, you can go to ctapodcast.live to send us an email. Or you can call our hotline at 402-718-9971 and leave us a voicemail. Your questions might be used for future episodes of the podcast. For now, like and subscribe and tune in next time.